Hi folks, it's Dino again. So I've committed myself to one last video, at least for a while, and uh, I've, uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue my experimentation with uh, Mod P, Mod P. Somebody in the comments, please tell me how to say that word. Um, and uh, the Raspberry Pi. I've uh, been kind of exploring different signal sources, and I'm sure you're looking at what I'm holding here. Uh, this time I'm using a digital horn. Uh, this is a Roland Aerophone AE10. This was a gift from one of my sons. And uh, it's a digital horn. Uh, it's a woodwind style horn. Uh, it plays a range of different onboard samples that are all really well uh, engineered, you know, uh, to reproduce a lot of the dynamics of a horn. Uh, it's also a MIDI controller. And... Uh, so, other than being a member of the Cantina Band, uh, I've got this plugged into my uh, Pi, and I'll go on to Glitch Cam here, and you can see that um, I've got a uh, stereo audio, actually. The uh, device is a stereo uh, instrument, so I've got a, a tip ring sleeve a jack going into the stereo input of the Pi, uh, the Pi Sound, I've got the same uh, split left and right channel out uh, cable into my workstation. But I also have this USB cable plugged in. And the USB cable is connected to the uh, output from the uh, from the Roland uh, horn. And it's, um, you know, recognized by mode P on the Pi uh, as a MIDI in and then it's assignable and you know in the in the software so let's take a look at what I have laid out in my uh, signal chain so you can see that there's a uh, kind of three paths here or 2.1 paths um, we'll focus on the audio path first uh, the audio path is uh, starts with those left and right channels and then I uh, send the left channel to a harmonizer and uh, the harmonizer is set up very simply in C major. It has a third and a fifth added, so it's just triads playing out of there. Um, the right channel is sent to uh, a digital capo, which is just a transposer. So it's uh, lifting the uh, input signal by a perfect fifth, so seven half steps. And... Um, so the, the lifted signal is going into an auto-tune, and this is a trick I've been using a bit on some of these demos, where I've constrained the notes of the auto-tune just to a few notes in the scale. Uh, in this case, again, it's a C, a D, and a G. So whatever note I play in the saxophone is raised to a fifth, and then it is justified to one of these three notes. And then the outputs from these two, the harmonizer and the uh, autotune, are then sent to uh, a crossfade. So they're sent as left and right signals. And uh, they are then, from there, they go to uh, plate reverb. And so we're going to go ahead and turn on all of the um, audio chain here. So the reverb, that's not in the audio chain. We'll get to that later. Uh, the crossfade, the autotune, the harmonizer, and the transposer. Oh, wait. I'm going to turn all these off because I'm going to play the horn direct first so you can hear what the pure tone of the instrument sounds like, which is pretty cool, actually. So let's have a listen to that. Again, this is just the saxophone unprocessed. So, very expressive. You get vibrato, you get a lot of dynamic range, you get a swell, you get legato playing, fingering and stuff, you know. Those are all things that are, again, part of the the way the sounds are engineered on this instrument, which is very, very cool. Uh, so let's go ahead now. Like I said, I was going to and turn on the signal chain. So reverb, crossfade, auto-tune, harmonizer, 
bit shifter. Okay, here we go again. Audio only. That's amazing. Um, hearing a four-part saxophone section uh, with all the richness and expression, you know, and unison playing. I mean, it sounds really well rehearsed, and I'm just playing like four notes. Um, all right, but that's not the end, right? That's where things start. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the MIDI chain. So this is the first time we've been doing anything in MIDI uh, on these demos. And so you can see that uh, I have a now a new output type here, a MIDI out that comes from the horn, and I can split that and assign it to all kinds of different uh, MIDI, uh, you know, instruments or uh, effects. So the first I send it to uh, are two effects, two MIDI effects. In this case, it's a transposer. It's a chromatic transposer. So one of the MIDI outs is going into the transposer down an octave. The other out, uh, and these are all channel one, are is going to a chord builder, a MIDI chord builder. And so I can turn on notes that I want. I can set a scale. And uh, now I have a uh, po polyphonic uh, playing coming out. Even though I'm playing a single note out of the saxophone, it's being sent to a transposer, so it's an octave below, and the chord builder to uh, play chords as well. And then, in turn, those are outputting to uh, sound modules. So, uh, in other words, samplers or sample uh, players or, you know, any kind of, um, uh, you know, generator. I have um, a bass, so the octave below is going to a uh, bass, a general MIDI bass, it's uh, in this case an acoustic bass, and then um, the chord builder is going, going to two instruments. It's going to an electric piano, and it's going to a set of synth pads. Now I have a gain stage here because mixing isn't exactly the strong suit on uh, uh, Mode P, there isn't like a, a I mean, at least I haven't found it. So again, somebody can tell me in comments how to do this better. Uh, but I mix as I go, set levels as I go. And then everything except the bass is going in through the same plate reverb that the stereo outs are coming from the audio chain. And then, of course, out to the mains. So I'm going to turn on everything here. Um, so the pads, the piano, bass, the transposer to get an octave below, and the chord builder. All right, so I have everything turned on, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play pretty much the same notes I've been playing, and you'll hear what this is doing. And a one, and a two. <laughs> You know how I can sustain the pad? As long as I keep a breath in the reed, I can actually, the MIDI is uh, picking that up and playing notes with it. Also, I can pitch bend just by pressuring on the reed. It's amazing to me. It's just so much to do uh, from just a simple horn. Uh, I guess it's not that simple, but what I'm playing on it is simple. That's what I mean. 
and then just creating all these layers of sound, all these attachments. That's one way to do notes with attachments. And uh, I'm going to keep exploring this and uh, experimenting and doing some compositions with this setup. Um, maybe I'll publish uh, some sounds, um, samples, or uh, finished works if I get that far. But uh, I am just, you know, falling into this hole. But I hope everybody else can follow me in and, you know, explore and do great things. So that's lots of fun, guys. And uh, nice talking to you. I hope to talk to you again soon.